Hello there, my name's Cheekster, and this is Ages of Conflict. This, as it says, a world war simulator. This is entirely really about war. Um, it's deceptively... Uh, it's, so, it's a very simple, straightforward game. It seems deceptively like empty or like devoid of anything really to do but you are as i show you over the next like 20 minutes you'll you'll see that it's particularly addictive like incredibly so um before we get into the game this is your settings um there's all that all your credits like uh, people who've done the musics and the maps etc etc that's it um these are your languages, uh, so yeah, pick your pick you on. Obviously, I am British, so I'm doing that one. Uh, you got scenarios. This is where you can play specific things, you uh, specific set scenarios that are already made. And then you've got new game here where you can pick a world. As you can see, look. So if you have fever dreams of dominating the world, dominating Europe, the Americas, Asia, Africa, the United States, Oceania, uh, Northern. Uh, Europe, the Arabian Sea, Japan, Pang Pangai, you know, the whole world scrunched. Skull Island, which is obviously a real place, and etc. I mean, I've downloaded a few. I've got a Great Britain one that I'm a big fan of. Um, Tamriel, this is Elder Scrolls, uh, which is very cool. And then you've got um, an Azeroth one, which I feel is a bit too small, but it's there. Now, I've made a scenario specifically for this video. It took me an entire day to build it, but I made it. So, before we get to that, just to show you, look here. World map, and it puts the countries in. Again, look, you've got your Americas, and, you know, your Europe's, and all the stuff, right? Uh, really good maps uh, that you can do is this one. Uh, this is a HD world map uh, where it's got like all the countries of the world and including uh, land taken in South America and not South America, uh, Antarctica. And so that's really cool. Uh, then you have the my favorite one is the subdivisions ultimate. This one is all the states of the world broken down, which is pretty insane. And then, of course, there's a Warhammer fantasy map for those of you who have uh have played Total War um, and feel like you want to play it in this game, <laughs> it's there for you. But the one that I personally made is this one here. It's quite a large map. As you can see, this is a galactic map. So we're going to click play. So what I did with this is I tried to build the galactic map of Warhammer 40k. And we'll press spacebar. So the game has started already. Now, what are you even looking at? I know, I know. So, when you get close, I've what I've done is I have filled all these places with names that are from maps and stuff. Like from the, I've got a bunch of codexes, like you know the the main codex right next to me. Um, here's the Eye of Terror. There we go, and it is split across the entire region. But what you're looking at are countries, effectively. Right, this isn't really in space. This is supposed to symbolize uh, space sectors of the galaxy and there's the sort of spiral. And then here are the Tyranid hordes or alien hordes coming from outside of the, our galaxy into it. And then you've got special places like Ultramar, um, you know, the Baal with the Blood Angels, Holy Terror, Mars. I've fit in certain stuff like, uh, like Forge Worlds and all sorts of stuff. And this map I have posted up onto the Steam Workshop. Yes, it's a Steam Workshop game, um, which makes it very popular for me. But these are countries. Okay, and you can change diplomatic view, which, which means you can click on the countries without having to turn into that green thing. But the green thing is quite interesting because say you take this one and then you have actions. This is the actions of the country. <coughs> <clears throat> that you can do you've got attack you've got fight which starts a war they initially do a war and then eventually they will call off a truce you can do fight to death where there will be no no surrender uh, no backing off and it's just until one country is eliminated peace obviously you know what that means and then alliances you can ally so these guys can holy terror can ally with let's say yeah the black templar fleet 
and Cadia. This means if here the Eye of Terror, uh, which is in the Chaos category, invades uh, this territory, uh, then um, these other countries will then join the war against it. But the issue is, because is they don't share a border, they won't come into play. The countries only clash when they share a border. You can do little little tricks and bits and bobs to edit that in God mode. This is a God uh, game simulator, uh, a bit like a world box, but completely different. So you can spawn nations with this button. So you click that and then you click down and it creates a little, a little thing, like a little city. So there we go. And then that's just called minor wood. So there you are. Um, oh, press space to keep playing. You can edit territory. So for example, if Holy Terror wasn't enough for you in that situation, let's turn off diplomatic view, click this and you can expand their territory into this region. And you can do that to spread them out further like that. And then any, anywhere that they share a border with, um, that is where they can wage war. Um, you can spawn cities, which is quite handy, which will be handy for the next demonstration. So say you've got Cadia Prime. This is a major place in the sci-fi universe, which falls. I've built all these extra cities. And that's handy yeah, for the display of combat in a minute. You can edit terrain, hills, uh, uh, basic land, hills, uh, mountains, desert and tundra, water, and crossing. Crossing is this ability. It creates a shallower water for your empire to spread over, which is what this color is, this off color. Now the different hills and lands, these actually, I believe they generate different amounts of gold, whoops, different amounts of gold, which uh, help build the coffers of the nations. Now that's one, so as you can see, like Voss here, Forge World, Voss is a lot less um, wealthy than Holy Terror and Mars. And so that's cool. If you're a Warhammer fan, you'll be looking at this being like, yeah, I get it. I get it. If you're not a Warhammer fan, just think of these as different countries. And we'll do a country one in a minute. All right. So there we are. Eye of Terror. And so we'll, what we're going to do is he's going to attack Cadia Prime. Now, this is his combat effectiveness, which means he's very weak. Cadia is now making gains and it's spreading out into multiple points. This brick area, these mountains, these are borders which stop. Um which stop expansion and there they called a piece they called it off right but Cadia did gain some ground so there you go this is how much gold they have this is how much combat readiness they have so the higher that is so if it's six it's it's pretty powerful and if Cadia is four it will lose but if Cadia is one this is to simulate the current law um, as it comes through, it's just taken the capital world of Cadia and it's flooding out and it's attacking multiple systems. And then, as you see, these two worlds have fallen. So it's quite interesting. And I like that. I like that, that you can create your own little kind of fantasies of how you'd like the universe to go. If you want the whole of Imperial Nihilus to be just Blood Angels, you could theoretically invade them or ally with them. Now, there are other rules, other rules in it. So, uh, we uh, the world AI settings, a looping map that means that um, terrain can cross whoop, cross the border here of of it and then and then come out that other side. Uh, this gives them the ability to start wars if you want the countries to start acting on their own. Winner takes all combat efficiency can be random, so you can do that progressive or static. Uh, join alliances. Uh, a unique thing about joining alliances is um, you can have a leave. You can also have it where unifications, where say you have, if like that Voss and, and Holy Terror unified, Voss is much smaller. So eventually after a while, it would unify with Holy Terror and lose its identity. You can do donations. This is the thing where allies send money to uh, another ally who's currently engaging in war. So for example, if the allies are not on the border, they can send finances to support their ally during that conflict core purchases this allows them to cause our cities and this enables them to purchase cities you can allow raising and remove enclaves which i've never done you can change the speed here really interesting button is statistics so statistics shows you the amount of area of the map so as you can see the eye of terror uh, in the chaos division is huge right then max area that's that then age that's just the age of the, the country everybody's the same age in this map 
um, then this is finances, so gold. And gold enables you to engage in a war long enough um, and also enables you to get, get back into the combat efficiency, which I think that's what that means, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, there you are. So as you can see, Holy Terror is the richest by, by quite far. Um, High Fleet Behemoth is, in, in the lore, is like a... F a flood of mindless like aliens but they're led by a thing called the hive mind which leads the hive fleet so they're kind of like mindless insectoid man-sized bugs effectively and then you've got ultramar which is like a bit like the imperium second empire by mind and uh, after other things fringe world blood angels but as you can see here they're all listed by wealth this map that I've, and then alliances, there's only the Treaty of Holy Terror, which is those countries that we allied. So when you click on that diplomatic view, you can see all their allies. Uh, when I made this map, I left it all open for you. So there's no alliances pre-made. This is entirely up to you. So like, I think like if you're making a 40K world, that it's um, it'd be quite interesting to build alliances with other, other countries. But this is a God game, so it pretty much... It's just as your whim if you want, but you can activate uh, a full global um, AI where all the countries become alive and they start taking actions and eventually start invading each other and uh, reducing each other's territory. So that's that. As you saw the war, this is quite a thing here. Cadiz had to move its uh, capital. That's interesting because when you click on this, you can give the city a name. So we can call it, I don't know, uh, Cadia Minor, right, if you want. And then that, that city now has a name. That's a new feature they added recently. You can also turn this um, into the capital. So you can, and, and capitals are an interesting thing because, so if I hadn't added all those cities, this here, which was Cadia Prime's capital world, if you like, their main city, if that had fallen, the rest of the country would entirely collapse because they have no point of of governance anywhere so it would have collapsed and then all these other two other states um would have they would have moved in and taken up the collapsing land you can remove cities uh you can um as you can see you can revoke the core so this uh that's an interesting little thing you can do so you can turn it into a white city which is like what's happened here with the eye of terror and so for example say there was suddenly a revolt in the cap in the the former capital you can spawn a revolt and then it creates this huge space here and then they can be like we're not having any of that and then they can click fight to the death and then if you want one city you can just keep clicking on the power and then it does it but as you saw when it hit that city the rest of it collapsed which is all quite interesting but then when it's conquered it then it turns into theirs you can revoke the core again all good so this is a I find this game very addictive. I know it looks simple. I know it doesn't look like it's much, but you can lose an entire day just clicking on these different states. You could be like, so I've done these worlds are protected here. La -de da but you can start a war wherever you like. If you want High Fleet, Behemoth can then begin its war against Ultramar. And remember, I've put this map up on the Steam Workshop. Uh, so, and if you want to play around with it and all that stuff, obviously, that's the whole point of me sticking up there, sticking out there for you. So there we are. That's that. This is quite cool, and I like this. This is a good Warhammer map. Now, what I'm going to do is quit this one, and I'm going to show those who are not interested in Warhammer um, the world. So I'm going to pick. I would pick this one, but it's so insanely so many states it's just a bit mad so click play so this one is for you guys who are interested in the real world so click click space there now what's happening is all the ocean around around all the countries all of all of that is set as crossing which means it can then start to be invaded uh, effectively the borders will spread now as far as i know the ocean the sea tiles don't generate gold as such but um but there you go you can click god mode and this is one of the things you you will find when you look at it that land mass and quality of land mass that's what determines whether a nation is strong or not 
so here you've got United Kingdom and France. France has more land, so it is uh, marginally stronger there because of that. So that's the thing. It's not. So it's not. Um, so that's like that's a, a realistic comparison. But there are some places like Canada is larger. Might say like Canada would be larger than the United States, and then it would just have more money than the United States, which is not specifically uh, like how it would really work out, is it? But it's interesting. Click here. Um, so if you click on diplomatic view, so I clicked on Portugal. You click on France, for example. There you are. You can see all that. Australia. You got Brazil. Then you got the United States. You have China. You have Japan. You've got Russia. Whoops. Uh, you got like Denmark. There. Look at that. That's Norway. Egypt. There's Turkey. And that I find all that really fun. To say like you wanted to start a random war, you can do that. Um, let's just say Canada goes to war with Denmark first, like like that's ever going to happen. Um, ooh. There we go. And then like you really want to win, so you, you click on that and that try and give them more gold. But and then with Denmark and you collapse their power. This is just a way to speed up the battle. And there we go. Now I set that to normal attack, so they could call um, they could call a peace treaty between each other. There we go. And that's quite interesting, isn't it? So that doesn't look very exciting, but when you start playing around with it and you start getting invested in like a territory you start thinking like oh that's really cool maybe i'll do this so maybe canada annexes all of denmark for some reason maybe it annexes that uh, iceland and then norway and then you start building these little empires and you'd be like oh well what if then canada went to war with you know russia or if it went to war with the united states you know or brazil or whatever you can create these little um little empires and that's that's what I love about this game is that it is a it's a game that it's a god game you choose but let's go to god mode and let's click start wars winner takes all and then we start pushing the speed up and then look and then you just watch and then you see what happens so you're seeing wars and alliances being pulled back and forth I think isn't that mad isn't that mad? It's highly addictive. You, if you're the, the kind of person who's into maps, and if you're into like fantasy um, kingdoms and creating your own empires, it doesn't have to be the world. You've got all other worlds. There is a map editor as well, so you can make your own maps, at, uh, or you can take a ma take a map template that's really large, and then you can play with that further. It's to me that's really interesting. You know, it's not very realistic, so. You know, like in in the sense of like you know the united states doesn't have all its sophisticated weapons or anything like that you know like china doesn't have all the stuff it's got it's all about land size like and that is what will win the win the matches and as as you see each of these states have different things france has naturally become naughty and has begun invading into germany uh, it's getting very Napoleonic there, and you, you can you can do those sorts of things, and you can have have your alternative histories. If you want Egypt to rise again and become the massive Egyptian empire or something like that, you can do that. You can have the United States conquer all of North America. You can have the British Empire again. You can have uh, the USSR again. You could have um, like India conquer all of this region. It could like take. India could take it to China and then like take over like Tibet and all sorts of things you could do there. Um, and that's just this map. This is not even talking about like uh, anything like, yeah, well, any of the fantasy maps that have been made. So there you go. Uh, this is a, this is a very addictive, cool game, very enjoyable, 100%. Uh, recommend it it's uh, relatively cheap it's on steam uh, ages of conflict uh, a simple video here but i just thought i wanted to share it with 
people who are map nerds like myself, who like a bit of strategy, like to god game, that's what this is for. This is for you. This is a good game. You will enjoy it. There you are. My name's Cheekster. Until the next video, bye-bye.